Bible Baptist Church. I pray that you've had a great week and thank the Lord for the opportunity he has given us this morning to assemble together. Take your hymn book and let's turn to page number two, excuse me, 162. Let's start with page 162. And if you are able, let us all stand and we're gonna take this opportunity to sing unto the Lord. Page 162, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. On the first verse, to God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life at the atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son and give him the glory great things he hath done oh perfect redemption the purchase of blood of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon. Lift it up now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Let the people rejoice. Oh God. Father, through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. And on the third verse, great things he hath taught us, things he hath done, and great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but pure or in higher and greater will be our wonder our transport when jesus we see praise the lord praise the lord let the earth hear his voice praise the lord praise the lord let the people rejoice oh come to the father through jesus the son Done. Has he done great things for you? That's all he does. Everything he does is great. Page number 29. Page number 29, if you'll make your way back towards the front of your hymnal. Page number 29, we're going to sing At the Cross, At the Cross, where we first saw the light. Page number 29, on the first verse. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign die? Would He devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the On the third verse, and then we'll do the fourth. Well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in. When Christ the mighty maker died, for man the creature sinned. At the cross where I burst all the light And the burden of my soul Yes it did It was there by faith I received my sight And now I And let's lift it up on that fourth and final But drops of grief can ne'er repay The debt of love I owe Dear Lord, I give myself away, tis all that I can do. At 
the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Wonderful thing, singing, you may be seated. this time to welcome all of our visitors and our fa uh, church family. We just pray that this uh, music will be a blessing to you and it'll prepare your hearts for the message this morning. We'll just go over a few announcements. Uh, Friday, May the 17th at 6.30 will be a couple's night. We will just pray that uh, if you're able to make it out, uh, the pastor's got a list of stuff he's planning on doing with you, and there's going to be a meal after that. And then uh, for Sunday school, the adult class, the pastor's going over teaching the ABCs of Christian maturity, 
uh, in that Sunday school class, and that's at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you're a new Christian or even a, uh, been a Christian for a while, it's a great class to go through. And then uh, the missionary of the week is Brother Joseph. He's a missionary to the uh, Mel Meltane. And then uh, we want to continue to uh, lift him up as he does that mission work there. And then the uh, ministry of the week is our Sunday school class. We want to continue to lift that uh, Sunday school class up, each and every one of them, and our teachers yeah. as they teach these kids. And then uh, Hope for Addiction meets here uh, on Friday nights at 6.30. And if you need to... Uh, Getting information, uh, Jason and Carla Brown, their numbers there, and then there's a uh, website. And then yesterday we had our men's meeting. Uh, we had seven men show up. We had a devotion on prayer, and then we went to the altar and prayed on our knees uh, just for the church, the community, and other things that are going on. And we need to continue in prayer each and every day. Yes. And then our just to let you know, there is another meeting June the 1st, so any of you men that can come out, we'd like to see you. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Bill. Yes, we had a great time of fellowship yesterday. Uh, afterwards, we went and had a good breakfast, and we appreciate the prayers. We're, we're, we were praying yesterday if today would be a reality for something to happen. So we're about to see what happens. <laughs> Brother Marvel, why don't you lead the men forward? We'll go ahead and wait on you. Give unto the Lord your tithe offering, your free will offering, missions given, whatever the Lord has laid on your heart for your particular stewardship role in his work. Good to see Brother John serving this morning, Brother Marvin serving, Brother Bill serving, and Brother Randy serving. And it is good to see you. I'd encourage you to come back tonight. Uh, tonight it's going to be a little bit different in the sense of we're seeing and have been seeing but perhaps so much the more in these past two months, a lot of anti-Semitism take place. And I'm going to be preaching tonight about what Christians can do for Israel. Now, there's a, there's a goal with the thought tonight, and it's really meant to encourage your life. And so I pray if you can come back tonight at 630, we'll be assembling together for that particular meeting. Brother Marvin, why don't you come to the altar, be in prayer. We got a few folks, allergies are starting to catch up with some of us. So we got a few folks out today dealing with the sinus issues and such. We'll have Brother Marvin pray, and then we're gonna have a song during the offertory, and then the ladies will sing one more song right before today's preaching. Yes. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Father. There's always an opportunity to be in your house, Father and Lord. We just pray. Thank you for the Sunday school hour and the teaching. And there, Father, and just pray that you bless each and every teacher in a Sunday school class, Lord. You just bless them as they may be able to teach the students the way that you'd want them to be taught, Lord, and help them to learn, help them to grow in grace and knowledge of you, Father. And just pray that you just bless the services this hour, Lord. Just thank you for singing thus far and the singing and the remain, Lord. Be with the offerings. We take it up. Pray that you bless there. Bless the gift and the giver, Father. We just can't thank you enough for being so good to us in our lives, Father. And just thank you for just your presence in our lives each and every day, Father. Help us not to take it for granted, Lord, even if we're not in church, Lord, to acknowledge you in our lives, Father, and to walk with you and to be close to you and to have our own personal devotions. Father, we just need you in this world, Father. And we just pray that you be with the lost. They come to know Christ, your Savior, Father. And just pray that you just have you well and way. And we do pray for those that's ill and afflicted, Lord. We just pray that you be with them. But Kevin and his sickness there, Father, Lord, lift him up, bring healing. Those others that's sick and ill, Lord, Father, just bring healing to them, Lord. Those that's traveling, bring them back to us, Lord. And Father, just pray that you just bless, Lord, of teaching, preaching your word, Lord, in this hour, Father, be with the pastors who brings forth the message. Father, just pray that you'd open our hearts, Lord, that we might uh, be taught of thee by your Holy Spirit, Father, and help us to pay attention, to learn, and to grow in grace and knowledge, Father. And just thank you for our church. Thank you for the pastor and his family, your people, your faithful people, Lord, and their faithful ministries, Lord. Just pray that you just help them to keep serving you, Father, and just pray that you be with our country and our leaders. Bless them. Pray for our elections coming up, Lord. Just have you well and way there. Pray for our president and vice president, Lord. Pray for their salvation. Lord, and all the uh, people that's in government, Lord, just pray for their, their relationship with you, Father. Just have you well and way. Guide and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
preaching this morning is going to be found in the book of the Psalms, chapter number 118. Psalms chapter 118. Psalms 118. All right, we're going to have the ladies sing a song right before the message that is titled, I thank you. For the times you kept me
appreciate that. Appreciate that. <clears throat> Psalms chapter 118. This morning is going to be our text. Pray that the message will be used to first and foremost honor God and bring glory to Him through your life. Psalms chapter 118. If you're able, let's all stand to the reading of the Word of God. This psalm is not titled, many believe, myself included, that it is a psalm of King David. He says in verse number one, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say, that his mercy endure forever. I called upon the Lord in my distress, and the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desires upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nations can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about, yea, they can pass me about, but in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. They can pass me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns, for in the name of the Lord I will destroy them. Thou hast thrust sore at me that I might fall, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and song and has become my salvation. The voice of rejoicing and salvation is in the tabernacles of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over on the death. Open to me the gates of righteousness, and I will go into them and will praise the Lord. This gate of the Lord into which the righteous shall enter. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which has showed us light. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? The first verse says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. The very last verse, verse 29, says, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. And between verse number 1 and verse number 29 is an explanation of why the psalmist wrote such. Let us read together in unison verse number 29. And we'll just read that one together and we'll start now. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I want to preach this morning on the subject of giving thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Father, who have we in life but thee? Thou art our God. Early do we seek thee. Thou art our life, and besides thee there is none other. Thou hast made man from the dust of the earth, and hast put breath into his very nostrils, 
and we are today. We thank Thee for guiding and directing through the affairs of this life. Surely, surely, Thou art to be praised. Thou art to be thankful. For Thou art good to the children of the sons of men. You look at down upon us this very moment, and you see our trouble. You see our differences. You see our perplexities, our hurts, our confusions, our brokenness. But yet thou art a God who is there and ready to mend. Work in the hearts of each of us this morning as we put our trust in your holy word and in the Holy Ghost. Work in our midst today and be glorified and honored. If there's one here today that needs to put their faith and trust and become a follower of Jesus Christ today, if there's someone here this morning that wants to give their life to the cause of Christ and follow him, let it be done even to thine own glory. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray these things in. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. giving thanks unto the Lord. David, which again I believe is the author of Psalms 118, was a man whose life we were able to study and look at and watch and think upon. He was a man who through life had many experiences. Most was good, a lot bad. He was very qualified by God as being God's servant to write this psalm. His life spoke of the goodness of the Lord. He was qualified to give thanks unto the Lord because of all that God had brought David through and all that God had done with him in his life. David's account of God's goodness deserving thanksgiving was very credible. Perhaps one of the things that we fall short of as people is on a daily basis stopping for a moment and recognizing our God above and bowing the knee to Him and thanking Him. Thanking Him. Why do we give thanks unto the Lord? Is He personal to you? Yes. He's a personal God. Is He good to you? Yes, he's good to you. Is his care evident to you and your life and your loved ones? Has he showed his touch as the great physician to you? Yes. Is he kind to you and gracious and full of compassion as the scriptures testify? Yes. Is he merciful to you? Yes. Has he demonstrated his love to you? Yes. On Calvary's cross, Jesus said, If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto thee. Is he always with you? And is he a constant guide for you? Is he your constant helper? Is he the very reason for your existence? Is he your provider? Yes, 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 and yes. God is worthy to be praised, and his name is worthy to be thanked for. David gives examples through his life when God was there. And obviously, if we looked at this psalm, we would spend a few weeks in looking at the different details that would reflect back to David and his life here. Whether it was with David facing Goliath, and no one thought that this little young Rudy man would be able to go out onto the battlefield with just a sling and a few rocks and defy this almost 10 foot giant there God was with him that day and on the way home they sang unto God and they praised God and they said Saul has slain his thousands and David is ten thousands and David learned at a young age to give God credit in his life and to thank him and to praise him and times when he made un, uh, poor ungodly decisions 
Yet God's mercy was there for him. His kindness was there. When he had trouble within his household, God was there and he had to leave his kingdom in the middle of the night because of one of his sons usurping authority. His very son trying to take his life, wanting the, the, the rulership and the throne in which he sat upon. And throughout the life of David, God, David says, was good to him. And David stands as just a normal individual taken from the sheep goat who learned to trust God, who loved to put his faith and learn to uh, give his heart to God. The Bible does say that he was a man after God's own heart. And he gives us examples here, lots of them, through his life that God was there for him. Examples that if the Lord had not been there for him, he would have been destroyed. If the Lord had not been there for him, he would have perished. Giving thanks unto the Lord. There's a song that covers all of this. <laughs> not the experience of David, but just the song in general uh, that just covers thanking the Lord. It's titled, Thank You, Lord. Have you ever heard that song, Thank You, Lord? For making the sun to shine, putting the stars in the sky, for the flowers to bloom, the ocean so blue. Thank you, Lord. For every sparrow that sings and makes sweet melody, for the rivers that flow, the rain and the snow. Thank you, Lord. For my whole family, for the joy my children bring, for shoes on my feet and plenty to eat. Thank you, Lord. For the church where I worship and pray, for the freedom I have today. For your spirit I feel, your presence so real. Thank you, Lord. For being a friend so dear, giving my sad heart cheer. For holding my hand when I could not stand. Thank you, Lord. For giving your life on a cross at Calvary. <laughs> For taking my place, mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. For all that you've done, sending your son. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole and saving my soul. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We ought to spend much time thanking him and praising him. Why do we give thanks unto the Lord? Well, first of all, because his mercy is toward you today and his mercy will never leave you. The psalmist says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. We ought to give thanks unto the Lord because today he's merciful towards you. He's merciful towards you. And God's mercy isn't like our mercy. It's not exercise when we're feeling good. God's mercy is forever. It endures. What does that mean it endures? When things ain't right in your life, he's still expressing mercy towards you. He endures long suffering. He is plenteous in mercy. The psalmist said in Psalms chapter 86 and verse number five, for thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. His mercy. You know, it's because of God's mercy I can say in my personal life that I've not been consumed. God gives us a second chance in life and sometimes a third chance and sometimes a fourth chance. And sometimes it's just over, and it's his mercy. It's his mercy. The great prophet Jeremiah knew how good God had been to Israel. And then it provoked him by the Spirit of God to write, It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. You know what Jeremiah knew? 
as a sober preacher and a sober, a sober prophet, he knew looking upon God's people, Israel, his very own people, that they were wayward, they were prone to wonder, that they didn't walk upright in accordance to the Word and the Holy Scriptures. And yet, as he looked upon that, that is the state and the stage of them people of God, he was reminded by the Spirit of God and he penned in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 22, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. His compassions. Isn't that wonderful? That God's compassion towards you will never not be. There can never be a time in your life when God is not compassionate towards you. And the thought of being compassionate brings with it the crowd and the idea of willing to help and, and to, to mend and to, to, to deliver and to give that which is necessary for the situation. He goes on and says, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. He says for you, this was true in your life this morning. But I admit to you, I haven't thanked him for it yet, but I'm gonna thank him right now publicly. Thank you, Lord, for your compassion towards me this morning. Because the Bible says here in Lamentations chapter three, it is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Thank you, Lord, for that. Appreciate that. I didn't do that yesterday. I didn't do that the day before, but I should have. I should have. They're new every morning. The Bible says, great is thy faithfulness. The psalmist said again in Psalms chapter number 30 and verse number 5 in this thought of God's mercy towards us and it deserves us to be thanksgiving unto him. Verse number 5, he says, for his anger endureth for a moment and his favor is life. Oh yeah, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. You know why joy comes in the morning? Because his mercies are new every morning. He can take a night that's full of heartache from swimming on a bed of tears. And he can put a star in your eye and wake you up in the morning with a whole new outlook on life. Give thanks unto the Lord because his mercy towards us never leaves us. It's here for us right now this morning. There's no doubt somebody here this morning needs the mercy of God. And God is here for you. He is compassionate towards you. His mercy doesn't fail. And he's faithful. And he's given you a day to show you such. Secondly, we give thanks unto the Lord because he never lets us down. Amen. He never lets us down. God doesn't fail his people. The psalmist knew that. In different times in his life, he knew that. Walking up to that giant Goliath, God never let him down. That night when he left home, in the middle of the night because of his son Absalom, wondering if he'd ever return to the kingdom, God never let him down. He let God down, but God never let him down. And he brags on God about that, and he gives God the honor and the glory in our text. In verse number five, I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me. That's when you need him. You need him all times, but you definitely need him in your places of distress. And he set me in a high place. He says, the Lord's on my side. I'll not fear what man can do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. I will see my desire upon them that hate me. And that's why he says, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in men. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put your confidence in princes. Men will let you down. Not expectingly, and maybe not on purpose. Nations and princes will let you down. But the Lord doesn't do that. Amen. The Lord doesn't do that. He won't let you down. David says basically, I called. And he answered. And you know what? You call, and he's still answering. He's still answering. 
God doesn't forsake his people. We are the sheep of his pasture. He says in Psalms 37, in verse number 25, one of the greatest chapters in the book of Psalms. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. You know, I've been young and I'm working towards being old. But I can tell you in 20 plus years of ministry full time, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen that happen. I've seen God's people get off track. And I've seen them get forsaken because of God's upsetness with their lives. I've seen things happen in the lives of people because of their neglection to praise God and acknowledge him. But the righteous I've never seen forsaken. And I've never seen their children begging for food either. I never have seen that. The psalmist says that in verse 25 again of Psalms 37. I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. The Lord will never let you down. God doesn't forsake his people. God should be praised. We should thank him because it is he that giveth you the victory. You want victory in life? You got something in your life that just seems to be a hassle on a daily basis? God is able to give victory. For the man who thinks he can live life apart from God will soon learn what it means to fail at things. But for the man who puts his faith and trust in God, learns how God takes his failures and makes them his triumphs. The psalmist says in verse 12, they they compassed me about like bees. They are quenched as the fire of thorns. For in the name of the Lord of hosts, I will destroy them. God giveth us the victory. There's victory for you today in life and everything. As a Christian, we surely believe the scripture when Paul says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Do we believe that? Then you and I'd be wise to give him all of our time and all of who we are. Never make an excuse to interfere with the victory that he's trying to produce. Never get involved and give him an opportunity to say, I'm not happy about that. Let God be pleased with your life and the way you live it and your following of the Lord Jesus Christ so that God can use you as a statue of victory and a world that has fallen and looking for the answers in all the wrong places. God giveth us the victory. You know, there's something interesting here in this context. This is actually from verse 10 to 20 about God giveth us the victory. If we was to read that, He talks about his enemies fallen and uh, the Lord giving him the victory. The right hand of the Lord doeth valiantly. We've read it a moment ago. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. But he says something in verse number 18 that deals with great victory in the Christian life. And he says this. The Lord hath chastened me sore, but he hath not given me over unto death. I find it to be of a wonderful fact that God chastises our lives so that we will see the wrong in our lives so that we can get the victory He has planned. If there's one thing that far too many of us do not acknowledge and thank God for, that is the chastisement that He brings into your life. I thank Him for it. Because it was through my times of chastisement that I have been able to see the goodness of the Lord and the reason of folly. And the Lord giveth victory. Don't ever forget, victory comes through chastisement sometimes. Sometimes the Lord needs to step into our lives and correct us as only He can correct us. And He does things to get our eyes off of things on the earth so that we may get our things. Sometimes I've seen it. And that is where God will take a man who is multi-talented 
And he is, is very successful in the world out there. And God will take that man and start working on his life and whittle him down to nothing to where that man can only do one thing. And that is to look up. To look up. And to realize the chastening hand of the Lord. And how it is for our welfare. If you're a child of God today, and you've been saved, and you've been washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I need to remind you this morning that the devil can't do nothing in your life unless God allows him to with what we call his permissive will. And God is such a sovereign God that is supreme in wisdom and knowledge that sometimes he allows the enemy to come into our lives to shake up our lives and to turn us upside down so that we can learn from it and get life right back up. Chastisement. We ought to thank God because he giveth us the victory. Fourthly, now this will be the thought of the psalm and we're going to conclude. But fourthly, we ought to give thanks unto the Lord because it is God and God alone who has the ability to give fallen man eternal life and eternal salvation. There's no way for you and I to have any dealings with God except we first be dealt with. There's no way we can come into his courts with praise unless we are first fitted with royal apparel. There is no way in the world that we can sing a song unto the Lord until he has changed our heart. That is a song that brings praise and honor to him. And it is God and God alone who giveth us eternal salvation. Here we find David 1,000 years about, give or take, giving a clear description of the coming Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in verse number 21, I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. Today, does God, the God in heaven, does he need to become your salvation? Does he need to become the God of your salvation? Are you saved today? I will praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. The word salvation means deliverance, saved. And here we see again a clear description of our dear Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He says in verse number 22, that this is the stone or the stone which the builders refuse is become the headstone of the corner. You know, Jesus mentioned this in his ministry as the Pharisees rejected him and the scribes rejected him and the Herodians rejected him. He made mention that the stone rejected has become the very head. You know, Jesus said that upon this rock, I will build my church. And that rock is Christ. You know, Paul the Apostle said that there is none other foundation laid than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. He is the rock. He is the only one. You know, the Bible says that there are two types of people this morning in which I'm ministering to. Those who hear God's word and who do not do it are likened unto those who build their houses upon sinking sand. And the storm down yonder, friend, it's coming. It's coming, friend. And the hard rain and the hard winds and all of that stuff, we may not see it in the horizon, but it's coming. And those who hear his word but yet reject his authority and build on sand, he says, fall, and great is the fall of it. But then there are those in Matthew chapter 7 who hear the word of God and they do it and they are likened unto the wise man which built his house upon the rock. And them same storms yonder that we don't see came and they blew upon that home and it stood for it was founded upon the rock. And by the way, Paul says to each and every one of us, we should take extreme heed to how we build. You should be paying attention how you're building your life. 
and the things that you're allowing to come into your life to add to you and to um, give way for greater things. Jesus is the stone on which the builders rejected. He is the one in whom we could stand upon. I, I enjoy the psalmist well, David. I enjoy his writings because um, they're so very personal. But he said at a time in his life when he was low, I waited patiently for the Lord. You know why he says I waited patiently for the Lord? Well, he couldn't go to man. He couldn't go to princes. He says in our text, he says it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So all he could do is wait on the Lord. You know, the Bible says, they that wait on the Lord shall be renewed. And David said, I waited patiently for the Lord. And he, incl listen, he inclined unto me and he heard my cry. You ever heard a baby cry? You ever heard an adult cry? Most adults don't like to cry. David was crying. He says, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. That's exactly who and what Jesus Christ does. Jesus is the stone and which should be under your feet upholding you this very moment. Secondly, he says here in verse 24, this is, is the day which the Lord hath made. will rejoice and be glad in it. You know, the Bible says in a couple different places, Luke chapter 1, verse 27, 2 Peter chapter 1, that the Lord is the day spring from on high. He hath come to visit us. You know why we have this day? You know why we're here today? Because the day star, the day star, opportunity, so much the more. And Jesus is the day star from on high. He comes into our life and he gives us light in reference to what the sun does to a day in, in, in creation. Christ, when accepted, comes into our lives and what the sun does or the light does to creation to make it fruitful and, and wealthy in its existence. This is what Christ does when he's allowed into our heart and our lives. This is the day which the Lord hath made, we'll be glad and rejoice in it because we got purpose and a reason for that. Verse 26, he says this, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. You'll find this over in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23. All of this was fulfilled in Christ. And he says, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. What's this trying to tell us? Well, Jesus said this, He was sent from the Father. And he was going back to the Father. But Jesus says very clearly, the reason he was sent from the Father is because he was sent to seek and to save that which is lost. Amen. You see here, we thank God and we praise him. Not only because he's the stone which the builders refused. Not only is he the day star from on high who hath condescended to visit us. But that he is the sinner seeker. And I can tell you with full assurance and confidence today. If you're here and you've not been saved. And you've not been born again. Jesus the son of God will knock on your door this morning. He has come here for you. He is the seeking Savior seeking the sinner. Luke 19, 10, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. He gives us another point here. Verse 27, the psalmist says, God is the Lord, which has showed us light. God has showed us light in the person of who? Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me will never walk in darkness. So, God is the Lord, which has showed us the light. Now watch. Bind the sacrifice with cords, even unto the horns of the altar. The altar would have been this gigantic, gigantic platform. And on each end of it would have had a bronze horn. That would have went out that way on each corner. And that's what they would have taken live sacrifices and tied them to. 
And that sacrifice would have been offered unto the Lord. It was a picture of an innocent, an innocent animal substituting a death for a non-innocent individual. And here we find the psalmist is teaching us and telling us this about Jesus Christ, that he is man's substitute. He died on the cross for our sin. He died for us. He was nailed on the cross. He didn't die for any sin that he had committed. He died for the sin you and I have committed. John the Baptist said when he seen Jesus, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. On Passover, they would bring a spotless lamb, a male lamb of the first year. He had to be perfect, and that lamb typified the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here, the psalmist is telling us, we ought to praise God, because he's sending the lamb who can take all of your sin away, and who can change your life and give you eternal life, so that when you leave this earth, you can be with God in heaven. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away our sin. He is our substitute. And then lastly, he says, Thou art my God, in verse 28. Watch this. I will praise thee. Thou art my God. I will exalt thee. Now watch this twice. Thou art his God? No. Thou art her God? Uh Uh-uh. Thou art their God? Uh Uh-uh. Thou art my God my God. And what we're finding here is this. Jesus Christ, God the Father, ought to be thanked because he sent one that can play between you and God and can make you acceptable where God in heaven can become your God. Jesus said, and I finish here, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Paul said, for there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You know how God becomes your God? Tell you how it won't happen. It won't come by you doing good works. You can't do enough good works. It won't come by being religious because you can't be religious enough. It won't come by straightening up and quitting this and doing that and adopting this. For it's not by works we are saved, but by God's grace. Today, you can have a relationship with God, your creator, and he can become your God. He is my God. That's about the only thing I really know down here, is he is my God. And I know how he became my God. He became my God by me looking to his son, Jesus Christ. And what we see here is we should praise God for sending Jesus Christ, the stone, the day star, the sinner's seeker, the lamb of God, the substitute, the mediator. He is the mediator. He is the one today that waits between you and God to give eternal salvation. He waits for you. He waits for you. Jesus said, he who cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. He waits for you today. If you're here today and you're not positive that God in heaven is your God, he can become your God today through the mediating work of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is able to take you by your hand and wash you whiter than snow and walk you into the very courts where God Jehovah resides and he's able to bring you before him and says, here is a child that inquires to know you and see you and whom receives Christ The Father receives. When we receive Christ, we receive that righteousness that God the Father requires. And we say yes to Jesus, he comes into our life. And we have now in our lives, because of our accepting Christ, we have what God requires. And that is a perfect righteousness which takes away our sin. What does all of this mean, ladies and gentlemen? Well, I tell you, it means one thing. You know what this means? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. That's what this means. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, his mercy endureth forever. Can we have every head bowed, please? Is God your God? Is God your God today?
If you're here today and you're not sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior, today you can make sure of that. Today you can be saved. While every head's bowed, we're going to give an invitation here in just a moment. This invitation is designed for you and God to do business together. God loves you. He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to seek you this morning. He is going to seek you this morning because he loves you, he cares for you, and he knows you. So he can't, it's impossible for him to, to pass you by. And if you're here this morning and you need Christ as your Lord and Savior, today you can get that. If you're here this morning and you're a Christian and you've been redeemed, when's the last time you thank God for his goodness? When's the last time you thanking God for doing all he's done for you? Do you live a life of gratitude to God, thanking him for what he's done? Father, now we pray that you'll come in your mighty spirit and we pray that you'll do the work that only you can. We trust now that you'll work in every heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand. We're going to give a hymn of invitation this morning. And an invitation is given a time for you to respond. This is a time for you to respond. If you need to come to the altar and God says, I want you to come up and pray. Oh, you, you ought to come on up here and pray. I mean, you don't have to. I'm just telling you, you ought to obey God and trust God. If your eyes today are on something else, it's not that evident in your life by the victory that you don't have what you want. Today, maybe as a Christian, you need to turn your eyes upon Jesus. You need to get your eyes off other things and put them on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's Miss Sister Molly and I uh, do an invitation together. Go ahead, Sister Molly. Page 261. If God is speaking to your heart, you ought to come and let him minister unto you. And let him do what only he can. He's the only one. He's the only way. Is he seeking you today? Oh, so are you wearied and troubled. No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior. And life more abundant and free. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely in the light of his glory and we're on page 261. If you want to get your hymn book and sing along with us, page 261. Through death into life everlasting, He passed and we follow Him there. Over us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strange. We're going to sing that third verse as God speak in your heart you can still come his word shall not fail you he promised believe him and all will be well then go to a world that is dying his perfect salvation Sing it with me on the chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely in 
the light of His glory and grace. Is God worthy to be praised? Should we be praising Him? I tell you, what more could we want? No doubt the saying is true, we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. What more could you want? You got a great God this morning. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you back tonight at 6.30. And we're going to be dismissed in a word of prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Jason Brown if he would speak loud and dismiss us in a word of prayer. God bless you.